Hello everyone and welcome to the long-awaited uh, Q&A video. Uh, basically, uh, all of you that used hashtag question uh, will probably see your uh, question here, although there were a lot of similar questions, a lot of the questions were actually the same, uh, so I filtered them out and, uh, for example, a lot of you asked uh, what is, uh, what's my dog's name. Uh, so I will only answer one of those questions, obviously. And if, you're, if your question is uh, for some reason not here, then it's probably due to a topic uh, I'm not willing to discuss on this channel, uh, such as politics, or I, I simply missed it. So if, if that's the case, I, I might have missed your question, uh, then just uh, write it in the comments and I will answer it uh, in, in this video. So let's get started. There are a lot of questions as uh, I really didn't expect so many questions. So let's uh, let's not waste time. Uh, first question, uh, when, and did, when and in what, what country did chess get invented? Uh, I have no idea, but I, I don't think that's like a known fact. I, I know that uh, some historians say that it came from India, some say that it uh, came from Persia. Uh, although I read a book about chess history and they say that there were even some chess pieces found uh, dating 2nd century in Italy. So it's hard to say if they were chess pieces or maybe just ornaments. Uh, but I don't think that, uh, that uh, the origin of, of chess is like a known fact. Uh, is Anand the best player of all times? Uh, well, I'm definitely not qualified to say who is the best player of all times, uh, but uh, he's definitely one of the best. Uh, what are your future plans for this channel? Uh, well, my future plans for the channel are to grow it very, very large. Uh, maybe have some grandmasters over, maybe maybe have some videos with them. Uh, maybe even organize some tournaments and uh, have a live broadcast. Uh, but definitely one of, one of my most uh, important plans uh, is to have like uh, a million subscribers and uh, then I can make a, an official petition to FIDE uh, stating that they have to grant Rashid Nejmedinov a Grandmaster title. So that's one, one of the plans. At what age did you start playing chess? Uh, well, my grandfather, who was a FIDE master, he taught me the rules when I was like four or five, uh, but I, I, never, I played the, like from five to seven and then I completely forgot about chess till I was like 17. Uh, then I again started playing a bit and then I think I joined the chess club when I was uh, about 19. Uh, who do you expect to be the next world champion? Uh, I have no idea who do I expect uh, to be the next world champion, but uh, I do expect Carlsen to defend his title after this uh, candidate series. Uh, can you recommend me some of your favorite books about chess? Uh, well. Uh, the books about chess that I mostly read were not so much about uh, studying chess, but were mo mostly chess biographies. Uh, so I, I, I will recommend uh, My Friend Bobby Fischer by Dmitry Bielica to everyone. It's a really an enjoyable book, especially if you like Fischer. Um, and mo mostly all of his books are great. Uh, Boris Pasky, On the Move. And uh, if you're like a total beginner, I would definitely recommend uh, Chess Fundamentals by Capablanca. The, I also started with that book, so of course I will recommend it. Uh, where do you live? Not your address. And where are you from? Uh, I live in Croatia, uh, in a very small town. It's called Križevci. Uh, it's like uh, 60 kilometers from the capital of Croatia, from Zagreb. Uh, do you by any chance know about any famous chess players that also studied med school? Uh, I, I know, I, I can't say that I do. I, I'm pretty sure I don't know any famous chess players that studied med school. Morphe studied law, but uh, I, I don't know about med school. Uh, how often do you compete uh, and slash can a young player like me sign up to compete? Uh, well, first of all, I don't know how young you are, but you know, you're never too young to compete if you're, you know, if you're willing to lose a few games. Uh, but uh, I don't compete that often, especially now, you know, in my younger days, maybe some 10 years ago, I did play about maybe two, two, three tournaments a year. Uh, but now I mostly play only my chess club championship as uh, that's very near, close to me and uh, uh, it's very convenient. I couldn't really afford to, to go play tournaments or, or to go abroad or something like that. Uh, your favorite opening uh, from both, bo both sides, obviously. Uh, well, uh, hard to say. I, uh, for every game I prepare, I, I prepare a different opening. Uh, that, that way I make the game interesting for me. But uh, I don't know. With white, I guess 
I enjoy, I enjoy playing the Evans Gambit. Pretty much people know that. And uh, as black, uh, I don't know. Um, as black, I'd, I I'm probably I'll probably always play e5 and go for the better of defense, but. Uh, you know, I, I now, well, in all of my games in my chess club championship now, as black, I played b6, uh, Owen's defense, so maybe maybe that's my new favorite. Uh, do you play any modern board game uh, with a chess-like feel? Uh, no, I can't say that I do, uh, although some more than 10 years ago I tried uh, a board game called Excalibur. It's something like chess, uh, but uh, all the pieces are the same, unless you see behind it, the piece, uh, what the piece is actually uh, about. And o only if you attack it you can see what it is, and then you have to remember what it is for the rest of the game. Uh, so it's not really complicated, but uh, I did find it quite enjoyable. Uh, would you rather play a Hyperbullet game with Tal or a Crazy House game with Carlsen? Uh, well, as Carlsen is still alive, I would uh, rather do anything with Tal if the opportunity uh, presented itself. Uh, favorite South American chess player? Uh, favorite South American chess player? Uh, I, I want to say Nydorf, but he's from Poland. Uh, he later he, he only later came to Argentina. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, probably Enrique Making, as he really did make his mark in the world if it wasn't for his unfortunate disease. Uh, illness, uh, he, he probably, you know, would have gotten really far. Uh, what aspect of Rashid Najmedinov's play uh, was so strong that Mikhail Tal found so hard to beat? Uh, I don't know if uh, that's actually the case here. Like I said in my videos, uh, of the four games they played, Rashid had the white pieces in all of the games. And uh, I, I think even if uh, Tal found a way to refute his ideas, he didn't want to spoil the combination as, you know... Uh, uh, total that was that was worse than losing uh, I'd say uh, can you do a couple of videos about the of the Evans Gambit and Paul Morphy yeah I, I mean I definitely could uh, what's your favorite beer uh, my favorite beer is actually the one uh, they make here in my hometown in Križovci it's called uh, Križovačko pivo or Križovačko beer so that's that's definitely my favorite uh, have you beaten Magnus 12 years old? Uh, no, I I tried to play one game, uh, but I my recording was interrupted uh, by someone, and uh, haven't haven't tried it since. And uh, I didn't uh, really think I could do it like blitzing out the moves like I did the previous ages. Although I didn't really blitz out age 11. Age 11 took me some 10 10 minutes if I remember correctly. Uh, but I will definitely get back to it. Uh, best opening book for beginner. Uh, I don't, well, I don't think that beginners should uh, study openings at all. Uh, when I started learning chess, I only had one uh, book for openings. It was the Theory of, Theory of Openings by Boris Ivkov, And uh, it was in two parts. One was uh, op open and semi-open games, and one was about closed games. So that's uh, the only book, uh, well, that's the only book I actually ever used to study openings. Probably why my opening knowledge is uh, really bad. Uh, when did you start playing chess and why? Uh, that's a really difficult question. Uh, I started playing chess, like I said, when I was about 17 years old uh, because we were at a playground and uh, a friend of mine challenged me to a game uh, saying that he can beat me in seven moves. Uh, in the end, uh, I, I accepted the challenge because I, even though I didn't play chess, I knew the, mo I knew the rules. And uh, in the end, I won that game, so that kind of got me interested. Uh, it seems like, you know, I haven't played for a very long time, but uh, I can win a game. So that's about time I started playing when I was 17. Uh, how do you pronounce your handle? Uh, you pronounce it uh, Agadmator, like, like it's, uh, you know, like it's written. Agadmator. Um, can I know your chess rating? Uh, my current chess rating, my national rating is around 2000 and maybe 60 or 70, uh, but my ELO is really low, it's about 1900 and maybe something, but uh, uh, I don't really play any international tournaments to actually play for ELO, when, when, when I only earned my ELO uh, it was about 2050, but then I played like a one terrible tournament and I lost like 150 points and it stayed like that ever since. Uh, 
What was your best ever rating? Uh, well, my best ELO was the one I got when I actually got my ELO rating. I think it was around 250. And uh, my best national rating was, if I remember correctly, 2095. I remember I was like a couple of points from winning my candidate master title, but uh, never got to it. Uh, I wonder who taught you chess. Uh, yeah, I already answered that. It was uh, my grandfather, Anto Krinic, also from Križovci. Uh, he was a FIDE master in Croatia, and uh, he really played chess like all the time. Uh, how did you get so good at chess? Well, I don't know where you get your facts, sir, but I never, I never <laughs> got uh, good at chess. Uh, what do you think of Go? Uh, why do you like chess more? Uh, I like chess more because uh, I'm familiar with chess. I'm not familiar with Go. And I, I never actually met anyone in person that uh, that knew how to play Go, to, to maybe teach me or something. Uh, any advice for the first tournament? Uh, well, don't uh, don't beat yourself about it. And, you know, just go play some games. It doesn't matter if you lose. Uh, all the games you lose, uh, when you start playing chess, they will be useful for you after you analyze them and you will eventually get better. Uh, as they say, the best way to get better is to actually play the games. Uh, bishop or a knight? Well, uh, I I'm definitely a bishop man. And uh, even in positions where it seems like knight would have a, a slight advantage, I, I will probably still pick a bishop as, you know, I, I don't mind like waiting two hours uh, for the position to open up to maybe only then activate my bishop. Unless the knight like really has an advantage, I, I think I'll always uh, pick a bishop. Uh, have you ever heard of Kasparov's Masterclass? If so, what do you think of it? Yes, of course, I mean, who hasn't uh, heard about Kasparov's Masterclass? Uh, I've never seen it as, uh, I don't know, I've never never had the opportunity to see it anywhere and I haven't purchased one. Uh, but uh, as Kasparov says, uh, it's, uh, it's, I mean, you're getting lessons from G Gary Kasparov himself. Uh, I think he said that uh, if you're below 1800 ELO that it will be useful for you. Uh, how did you get the name Agad Mater? Uh, well, that that will still remain a mystery. And uh, may maybe I will answer this uh, on some other milestone. Uh, do you have any recommendations for beginners? Yes, uh, study the endgame, don't study the openings, and uh, try to understand chess principles uh, as, as best as you can. Uh, any good chess books to read? Uh, e every chess book is good. I don't know. If, if you're a total beginner, like I said, I always recommend... Uh, Chess Fundamentals by Capablanca, but uh, I, I also hear anything by Jeremy Silman is good, although I've never read any of his uh, works myself. And uh, yeah, if you're if you're a bit more experienced, you're you know maybe at a level where you want to sharpen your tactics and maybe you know even start uh, creating a game plan. Uh, then one of the be best books I've ever read was uh, Strategy and Tactics by uh, Grigory Mihailovich Lisitsin. It's a book in three parts. Uh, one is about, you know, really sharp tactics. So one is about, uh, like, uh, middle game tactics or something like that. And the part three is a finding finding a game plan. So it was a, a but you'll need a lot of time. If you're not going to, like, read it and for, for an entire day, I think it took me about a year and a half like when I was traveling from Križovci to Zagreb every day by train, uh, I used like that time, maybe an hour, or if the train was late, maybe even two hours to read that book. Uh, do you think uh, there are too many draws uh, in the chess tournaments and uh, that this is something that should be addressed? Maybe by employing soccer pointing system, three points for win, one point uh, each for draw, zero points for losing a game. Ah, yes, this is something that was discussed many times. Uh, I don't think it would actually uh, decrease the number of draws, uh, but it would definitely make, uh, for example, games that are closer to the end of the tournament more interesting. As if someone was behind two points, then you definitely can use that win and maybe you will then employ a very sharp uh, opening. So it might get uh, it might get the games more interesting and uh, I, I kind of think they will employ this system in the future. Uh, what is your dog's name? The dog's name is Medo. It's like M-E-D-O. It means uh, bear in Croatian or maybe little bear. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's Medo. Although some people actually think it's Medo, like an Eng English word, but it's not. Uh, do you have a favorite chess game? Uh, well, I mean, choosing a favorite chess game is like uh, impossible. But if I had to pick one right now, 
uh, I, I, I would definitely choose uh, Nejmedinov versus Chernikov in 1962, that wonderful queen sacrifice on f6. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you can check it out on my channel under the greatest queen sacrifice in chess history. Uh, whether it's the greatest queen ch sacrifice in chess history, maybe not, but uh, you know, I, I really like it. Uh, and it's my favorite. Uh, do you have, uh, sorry, uh, do you say hello everyone when interacting with people in your life? Uh, no, as people uh, where I'm from don't speak English, so that, that would be quite weird. Uh, what, do you, uh, what do you like to do in your free time uh, other than chess? Well, basically everything, you know, enjoy walks with Meadow, uh, enjoy spending quality time with uh, Yelena, uh, I enjoy playing video games, I mean, who doesn't? And, uh, you know, a, a lot of things, going out for a beer, yeah, a lot of stuff. Uh, what is your favorite game outside chess? Uh, well, I don't know what you mean by game, but uh, I don't know. I guess I guess I could say uh, Texas Hold'em. I really enjoy poker. Uh, have you ever played a game blindfold? Uh, yes, I have played blindfold games, uh, mostly for fun and mostly you know, when you're out with someone having a beer. Uh, but uh, you know, if I'm playing a weaker player, I will win a blindfold game. But uh, a stronger player, not so much. But then again, I'm not going to win against a stronger player, player even without playing blindfold. Uh, what is your favorite chess piece to use? Uh, I have no idea. I think only, I, I'm pretty sure only children have favorite pieces, but if I had to choose, I, I would definitely go for the rook, as you can always make a nice rook lift. Uh, do you still work out? Uh, yes, uh, I don't go to the gym anymore. I do some home uh, exercises at home, but uh, I'm definitely planning to go back to the gym probably very soon. Uh, what would you say is the most important thing to learn as a beginner? Uh, I think it's definitely the most important thing to do is to learn uh, the end game and uh, the general chess principles. Uh, definitely not the openings. Uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, well, uh, I worked as a graphic designer in a local company for like four years, uh, but as of uh, October last year, I quit my job and now I only do YouTube. Uh, what would you say is the most important thing to learn as a beginner? Yeah, I think we already have that, had that, sorry. If you would face a grandmaster, who would you like to play? White or black and what opening? Uh, I don't know. I would definitely enjoy a game with Ivanchuk and I wouldn't really care if I was white or black or what opening it was. Uh, could you show us a chart of the growth of the number of subscribers uh, from when you began this channel until now? Uh, well, I could, but then again, that uh, information is publicly available to everyone. You can just go to Social Blade, type Agad Mater, and you can see all the statistics uh, regarding my channel you're interested in. All right, uh, yours is the only channel featuring a dog. What made you decide to include Medo in your videos? Well, I never decided to include him in the videos. Uh, he just uh, started appearing by himself as he doesn't really have uh, re any restrictions where he can go and not go in the apartment. So for some reason, he always uh, gets behind me when I do the videos. For example, now he's not, he's like sleeping here next to me. But, uh, you know, if he decides to, yeah, he really likes the couch. Uh, sorry, where were we? Uh, which is your favorite video? Which was the hardest to do? Which was the easiest? I don't have a favorite video. All of them are, you know, uh, some of them ha have more blunders, some of them have less blunders, but, uh, you know, I don't have a favorite one. Uh, none of them were really hard to do and none of them were really particularly easy to do. Some of them did require a bit more research, but, uh, you know, to pinpoint uh, an individual video, I, I don't think I could do that. Uh, which video received the most views? The most views, I believe, uh, was the video uh, I titled uh, Bobby Fischer Beats a Grandmaster in 10 Moves, uh, which is very unfortunate because uh, that game, Fischer didn't beat a Grandmaster in 10 Moves, uh, but that was like the first video I made on YouTube uh, in, in this style where I have the board and I, I like analyze the moves. And uh, I was doing that, that video from memory and for many, many years I thought that that game actually lasted 10 moves and that Rashevsky surrendered, uh, I mean, that he resigned in that position. But in the end uh, I realized that, that that game lasted like 42 moves. 
So that was very unfortunate, but uh, yes, that video uh, has the most views and probably it's uh, the biggest blunder I ever made uh, while making a video. Uh, how has uh, making YouTube videos affected your social life? Uh, well, I don't think it really affected it. Uh, I don't know. People talk to me more about YouTube, but you know, I still see the same people, you know, go for a beer with the same people. So it hasn't really affected my social life. Uh, do you feed Meadow dried dog food? Do you feed him corn-based dog food or some other kind of special diet? Uh, well, not really. Meadow, Meadow eats uh, only, uh, you know, not nice food that, that, for example, humans would eat. Uh, not nice vegetables. Not really vegetables, but uh, he, he eats meat, for example, the same meat humans would eat. And, uh, you know, pretty much... Uh, yeah, sometimes I buy him some special food, but then he doesn't want to eat it for a couple of days. He's very picky. Uh, sometimes uh, he will eat this and not that. So there's there's really no uh, no rule to this. Uh, how has making uh, of chess videos affected your style of playing chess? Uh, well, if anything, it worsened it. As uh, <laughs> as uh, for as long as I'm making uh, chess videos on YouTube. Uh, I, I don't know. I think uh, my my playing strength may, maybe has improved and I take uh, more care about every move. Uh, but uh, at some point, uh, for example, I lost my last game uh, in my chess club championship uh, because I, I, I created the winning position and then I completely stopped thinking about the game. I started thinking about other things, maybe what video I'm going to do today. And in the end, that resulted uh, in me actually worsening my position. Then the position was a draw, and then I wanted to forcefully uh, win it, uh, which ended in me losing the game, which was in the end fair. But uh, yeah, de it definitely affected it. How much time does it take to make a chess video? Uh, well, it depends. Sometimes you need like uh, a 10 minute preparation if there's like not a big story behind the game, uh, and it's maybe if it's a short game, 20 moves, 25 moves. Uh, but if it's uh, maybe 45 moves or 50 moves and there is a lot to talk about behind the game, maybe do a little research, uh, it depends. It can range from, I guess, 10 minutes to an hour and a half. It depends on uh, how focused you are uh, on studying it and analyzing it. Uh, I noticed a big improvement from the earlier videos. Has anyone advised you or helped you in improving your channel? Uh, well, uh, every one of you probably uh, advised me on how to improve my channel as uh, you know whenever someone you post a comment uh, you you always say how to improve something so I don't uh, do everything but uh, for example I remember someone in my earlier videos uh, said that he would very much enjoy if there were actually photos not photos pictures of the players uh, next to the board so I added that and in the end it all worked out and uh, you know little by little uh, with your suggestions, this is the this is the final result. Uh, what's your opinion on Maurice Ashley? He took a lot of heat for the smooth incident, uh, but he's also a long-time GM who has been successful in bringing chess to the masses and uh, getting people excited about the game. Do you think that awkward interview has ruined his reputation? Uh, well, no, I, I for one uh, really enjoy his commentary. He's a very lovely guy and... Uh, uh, I don't think that one awkward moment ruined his reputation, as I don't think one awkward moment can ruin anyone's reputation. Uh, you know, if you if you judge someone based on one awkward moment, then that's like that's like not cool. So no, I don't I don't think it did. Uh, what is the best uh, way how to learn to play better? Uh, well, play long games like. If you play online, then play at least 15 min 15 uh, minute games and analyze your games afterwards. And then, you know, just may maybe don't uh, use a certain opening, but use a certain system, something you enjoy, uh, something you like playing, and then try, try to get better at it. Uh, have you played Mato Jelic on YouTube? If not, would you play him and uh, make each and each make a video? I have never played him, but uh, yeah, I would definitely enjoy playing against Mato. Mato is a legend after all. Uh, how do you think that we can all dispel the misconception that chess is some magical game that requires genius level of thinking? Uh, 
I don't think chess is some magical game that requires some genius level of thinking. I think it's like in every other sport, art or anything. Uh, you know, you can just uh, put a little effort into it and you will get little little results. But if you really put yourself into it, uh, the results will be, of course, greater. Again, we have what does Agad Matur mean? Uh, for, time be for the time being, I will leave that uh, a mystery. Uh, what are your three favorite gambits? Well, as I, I really enjoy all the gambits, picking only three would be very hard. Uh, but I would definitely have the, the Evans Gambit, the King's Gambit. Uh, but I don't play the King's Gambit that often now because, you know, people just play the Folkbeer's Counter Gambit. Uh, so for number three, I will use uh, Folkbeer's Counter Gambit to the King's Gambit. So that's uh, probably my top three. Uh, can you tell, tell a brief history about yourself? Uh, well, you know, what, what's a brief history? Uh, I went to school, I went to high school, you know, I didn't really have any problems in school. I, I went to college, I first I tried uh, studying law school, uh, but uh, didn't really care for it. So then I tried uh, graphics design, but didn't really care for that either. And uh, third, I tried like uh, computer science or informatics, however you call it. Uh, I did finish first year of college, but then I like lost interest in it. So, uh, you know, then I started working. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, besides work, I've been also shooting weddings for like 10 years. So on the weekends, uh, but, uh, you know, now after all of that, I'm, I'm at this point in my life where I'm just doing this and, uh, you know, see, see where, where it takes me. Uh, do you and your girlfriend have plans to have kids? Uh, yes, definitely. <clears throat> uh, do you think you'll analyze more women's chess matches in the future? Uh, well, I don't analyze games based on whether they were played by a man or a woman, uh, rather than how what if the game was interesting and how strong the player that played it uh, was. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's not like uh, a lot of your suggestions don't really suggest uh, uh, games played by women chess players so but I think I showed plenty you know <clears throat> have you ever thought uh, of collaborating with another chess channel uh, well yes uh, I've thought about it although I don't think uh, anyone ever asked me so but you know I don't know how, how we could would collaborate if uh, we were to meet up in person and then create something like some content that'd be pretty cool uh, but uh, like making a video together, you know, everyone at his own computer don't, doesn't really, I don't really see the point of it. Uh, but uh, playing against someone else, yeah, that would definitely be enjoyable. Uh, are you ever going to make uh, any videos analyzing games sent in by your sub subscribers? Yes, I definitely will. I'm still going over them. Uh, has your left-handedness uh, ever affected your gameplay or sportsmanship? I don't really know how to answer to this, uh, but there is one good side of being left-handed. When you're a chess player, as most people are right-handed, uh, you will never argue with your opponent whether the clock will be on the, on the left or on the right. In some tournaments, the, the arbiter will uh, you know, say that it has to be on the right so that he can always see what uh, time it is on the clock. Uh, but at some tournaments, that, that there, there is no rule like that, so you, you will have to agree with your opponent. It's uh, usually that the, the, the player with the black pieces, he gets to choose where the clock is, but uh, you know, if there's not that rule, and if your opponent is very rude, for example, then you could argue. Uh, but you know, if you're a left-handed person, then it's all good. Uh, I have been playing chess for some time now, uh, but I like the strength in identifying a bad move uh, and how to capitalize on that. Uh, well, there's really no quick way to get through this. It's like something you would call a tactics alarm or, or, or a chess alarm, you know, something like Spider-Man has when he senses tingling. Uh, simply play and with time you will, you will develop this alarm. Uh, how long have you been playing chess and what motivates you to do it? Uh, what, it's uh, very hard to answer what does playing chess mean. Does it mean playing actively in tournaments, playing like uh, any opportunity you get, playing online like bullet games. Uh, but, uh, you know, all in all I've been playing since I was like 17. So, roughly 13 years. Uh, what motivates me to do it? Uh, well, I, I really enjoy it. It's really the best motivation you can get. Uh, why do we always find out uh, it was a stupid move to make just after we made it? Uh, well, 
sometimes you don't. It's mostly due to the fact that your opponent will punish your bad move uh, or your mistake. Uh, but uh, actually, I've seen a game played by Josh Waitskin. It was uh, in some junior USA championship. And uh, he left his rook hanging. Like, he, he just left the rook and his opponent could simply capture the rook and it's game over. Uh, but his opponent didn't see it. Uh, nor did Josh. Uh, he just moved the rook for the, uh, on the next move. Uh, but he didn't even realize uh, he left it hanging. It was only after the game they told him and he was like, what? But he won the championship. So, uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, how long have you been playing? No, okay, have you saw that. Uh, did you name your dog Meadow because it means fear in Portuguese or for another reason? Uh, I, I had no idea what Meadow means in Portuguese, uh, but uh, I didn't uh, name him either. Uh, he was actually uh, a dog, uh, and my girl, um, he, was, uh, he was actually <laughs> owned by my girlfriend's parents, but they had to go uh, leave country, they had to go work in Germany, so uh, we decided that we will take care of Meadow. Uh, Sorry. Uh, do you plan on returning to professional level? Uh, at the moment, no. I would have to really take my time, you know, get back into chess uh, to really, you know, I would have to prepare nicely, like for for a month, month and a half, and uh, go to some strong tournament to just get back into playing. And I would probably play the tournament terrible, so maybe on the second uh, tournament I would go to, I, I could maybe gain some results. Uh, when is your birth birthday and uh, how old are you? Uh, at the moment I'm 30 years old and uh, my birthday is on 16th of June. Uh, how many hours do you do something related to chess in a day? Uh, I don't know, probably like half a day. Uh, you know, as I do have a lot of comments to go through your games you sent me, your photos you sent me. So that, that takes up uh, a lot of my time as, you know, I really appreciate the interaction between you guys and myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, roughly half a day, sometimes even more. You know, when I was uh, covering the World Blitz and Rapid Championship, even an entire day. Uh, when is your okay? Sorry, uh, Ivan or Carlson. Ah, uh, that's like, I mean, Carlson is still too young to be featured anywhere. You know, he can be featured in maybe ten years. So I will always uh, pick Ivanchuk. Uh, what is your favorite gambit to play? How about to play against? Uh, well. Uh, once again, it's probably the Evans Gambit and to play against uh, probably the Folkbeer Gambit to the King's Gambit. Uh, when you started the channel, did you get support from friends and family or did you continue despite some uncertainties from other people? Well, I think anyone who ever started a channel will tell you that no one actually uh, thought that was a particularly good idea, especially if you uh, really put a lot of time into it. Uh, in my in my case, uh, my girlfriend was very supportive. Uh, you know, she always uh, enjoyed when I you know put put time in put time into something. Uh, but most other people would tell you that uh, you know that's that's uh, very cute, but I, I don't think that's like gonna work or something. So if you ever decide to make a YouTube channel, you know, ignore anyone who doesn't boost your confidence. Uh, any chance one of the greats will willingly Aha, uh -huh, sorry. Any chance one of the greats is willing to make a video with you about one of their games? Uh, I would definitely enjoy that, although unfortunately uh, many of the greats are very rarely here in uh, Croatia. Kasparov is actually here quite a lot, so uh, I might get him at some point to join me. Uh, if you had the choice and the time machine, which chess player would you like to have a match with? Well, all of them, really. Uh, how many Grandmasters have you played? Uh, over the board in classical chess, I only played one, and you've seen that game on my channel. Uh, but uh, online, like in, in Blitz and Bullet, and uh, you know, uh, any short time formats, I, I really have no idea. Uh, when will we get a video about your dog to see you playing with him? I don't really see the purpose of such a video, uh, but I do have some photos of Meadow on, on Instagram, and uh, I do have a nice video of, of him I could upload. So you, maybe you can check that out. As Meadow, it really doesn't like to be photographed. Uh, it's, I, it's very rare that I photograph Meadow. Uh, he's like afraid of everything, you know, of bottles, of cell phones. He's like, uh, he's like a really weird dude. Uh, will you finally tell us what Agadmatur means? Yes, I will, but not in this video. That is still to remain a mystery. Uh, is the world, uh, if the world was a chessboard, who is the king? Nah, that is really 
the question. Uh, well, if the world was a chessboard, first of all, I guess there would have to be two kings. Uh, but, uh, you know, who would those kings be? I really couldn't say. It doesn't really matter. You know, the king needs uh, pieces and pawns to protect him. If it's a lousy king, then they'll just uh, get rid of him. Uh, what do you think of four-player chess? Uh, I've seen it, uh, but I can say I, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, never, never actually played it. Uh, how is the island of Mnet? Uh, I've never actually been there myself, but I, I hear it's quite lovely. It's, you know, it doesn't have a lot of people, so you know it has to be lovely. It has quite quite a be beautiful land site. You know, I think there are like a thousand people leave, living there. Uh, have you ever made your own chess set? Um, well, one that I can remember, I was uh, some 10 years ago in Zagreb with a friend and we couldn't find any chess sets to buy. There was like no chess set anywhere to buy. Uh, so we m made our own out of cardboard and we uh, we made the board and we even cut out two, two spots for, you know, beer or coffee or whatever you like. Uh, which, But only the board, not the pieces. I, I, yeah, we had the pieces, only the board. Uh, which is your most memorable chess match that you lost? Uh, can't uh, can't really remember. Most memorable that I lost. Hmm. Well, I did play. Uh, I did play. I did play a game. It was. Uh, it was. I believe it was the Croatian team chess. Croatian team championship finals. Uh, I, I'm, I think it was a game against Marko Bosiocic, not really sure, Marin's brother, uh, and uh, I played the Evans Gambit against him, and it was like, maybe in move 6 or move 7, he took like 45 minutes to decide on the move, uh, and he, he played, I'm uh, pretty sure he never faced the Evans Gambit like uh, in, in classical chess, and it really took him a long time to, to answer, and uh, finally when he did, uh, my position was still was still you know decent, but then I like completely ruined it and uh, I lost the game of course. And I was I was very sad because I was very happy when I saw him thinking for like forty five minutes, uh, and he was much 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 higher rated than me, maybe even two two hundred or more elo points higher rated than me. So that could be uh, most memorable not match but game that I lost. Uh, do you plan on making more special videos like the top 10 facts about X chess players? Uh, yeah, I, do, I definitely enjoyed making those and I will definitely make more at some point when I really don't know. Uh, have you considered doing a series on openings? Uh, well, a lot of you ask me this, but there are so many uh, videos about openings on YouTube. I don't see how I could contribute, you know, to, to making a series about openings. Uh, <clears throat> Maybe I could um, do a series on the Evans Gambit or something like that, but on openings, I'm sure there are plenty of videos on YouTube already. Uh, have you, sorry, uh, if you could receive private lessons from any living chess player, who could it be? <clears throat> uh, from a living chess player, probably, again, Vasily Vanchuk. Uh, that would be, you know, like, like an epic lesson. Uh, what is your favorite Croatian beer? Favorite Croatian beer is... Uh, as I don't really like bottled beers, uh, I would uh, I would have to say the one made in my hometown in Križovci, uh, the Križovačko pivo, that would have to be my favorite beer. Uh, what books or methods do you prefer for me to improve my tactics and strategy? Well, the only one I used for tactics and strategy, I will repeat it again, uh, it's Strategy and Tactics uh, by Grigori Mihailovich Lisicin. It's quite a, quite a lovely book. I mean, three books actually. Uh, when participating in a tournament made up of stronger players than yourselves, how do you prepare? Well, the best player, the best tournament to play in is the one where all the players are stronger than you, then you really have nothing to lose, you can prepare for every game. Uh, you will have a lot more material to use, you know, there are a lot more games if your opponents are stronger. Uh, they will have a lot more games online, you can download them, you can study their openings, and they will have far less information about you, so you can use that in your advantage. And you know, be brave, attack, and uh, you know, hope hope for the best. Uh, how about hosting an online tournament <clears throat> more often for your subscribers? Yes, that's uh, that's definitely not a bad idea, and I always say that I will do this, but then uh, something always gets in the way. But uh, I will I will try and make it 
I always say I will like once a week, uh, but something always interrupts me. But uh, I should really, really take care of that. Uh, how long in moves was the longest chess game you have ever played? Uh, probably around 100 moves. I don't think it, it, it was over 100 as uh, there are 60 moves that can uh, fit into a sheet and uh, I'm pretty sure I used two sheets but not not so so much. So I think less than 100. Uh, sorry. Have you ever heard of a chess player named Rusty Shackleford? Uh, Rusty Shackleford. No, I, I can't say I have, but I will, I will definitely Google him. Uh, what is your favorite? Uh, beer, wine or vodka? Uh, beer, of course. I'm totally a beer man. Uh, but since you didn't put Rakia here, uh, but even if Rakia was here, I would also choose beer as, you know, beer is beer. Uh, do you... Uh, do you play? The ch did you play chess in school? Is chess t taught regularly in Croatia in schools? Uh, I I haven't myself, but uh, some 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 did. As uh, I never actually even knew that we had. Uh, it wasn't really a chess club. It was more like a chess hour. You know, uh, instead of going to the gym, you you could go play chess. Uh, but uh, I never actually even. Uh, uh, but even if I knew, I I don't think I would have. Uh, now it's it's. It's not regular in Croatia schools, but with uh, Kasparov doing so much trying to get chess into schools, uh, it might actually soon very well be. Uh, the highest feeder rated player you ever beat and you ever played. The highest rated uh, FIDE player I ever played uh, was the one uh, I already made a video about. Uh, you can check it out on my channel. Uh, I think uh, he's, he was rated around 2500 and something. And uh, highest rated FIDE player I ever beat, uh, I believe was somewhere around, I, I really don't know, as sometimes they show their national ratings, sometimes their ELO ratings, uh, but I think around 2250, may maybe 2300. Uh, do you have any children? No, I don't, even though a lot of you have congratulated me for having kids on that Rashid video, but I don't. Uh, what are your top three books? Uh, top three books, uh, I don't know. I will go for the My Friend Bobby Fischer by <laughs> Dimitri Bielica and since I don't know if if you're asking about chess books, uh, I, I will gladly also include The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins and maybe uh, Physics of Star Trek by Lawrence Krauss. That was also uh, an interesting book, so let, let's go with those three. Uh, why is The Sicilian called The Sicilian? I have no idea. I think... Uh, uh, at, probably due to the place where it was played and uh, later, you know, they, they just left the name. So, I, I'm pretty sure Google would know this. Uh, why do you not show games of Vishy Anand? Uh, well, I actually show a lot of games by Vishwanathan Anand. There's even a playlist uh, about Vishwanathan Anand's games on my channel. Uh, you will find a lot of his games there. Uh, what game of yours do you feel is the closest to your immortal game? Uh, well, um... Uh, I remember one game I played, I actually even wanted to find uh, my notes about it, but uh, as we moved, uh, we like sw changed five apartments, so I'd, I'd have, I have no idea where my games are, but it was, I had the black, I had the white pieces, I was playing against the candidate master, and uh, he played the French against me, and I remember I, I sacrificed like three pawns in the opening, and then I sacrificed like a lot of the pieces. Uh, and then in the end, checkmate is king in the center of the board. So that was that was very enjoyable, uh, but uh, I'm still not able to find. If I found if I find out where my games are, I will definitely show it. Uh, what are your top three chess players? I mean, it's uh, impossible for someone who is who, who is in chess every day to pick three top chess player three chess players. Uh, but uh, I, I will definitely put. Nizhmedinov, Tal, and uh, I will go with Capablanca. Uh, but uh, then again, I, I have to choose Ivanchuk, so I have no idea. I, I will I will go for Tal, uh, Nizhmedinov, and Ivanchuk, definitely. Capablanca will go maybe if there will be like a top five. I don't think uh, this doesn't uh, have anything to do with their strength. I just, uh, they're just my top three chess players. Uh, who is the best chess player of all time in your opinion and why? Uh, well, I think uh, 
best of all time is definitely, in my opinion, uh, Jose Royal Capablanca. Uh, why? Well, his results speak uh, for themselves, and uh, you know, uh, even after losing his title to Alekhin, he still continued winning tournaments, uh, you know, strongly. Uh, but he never, never, ever got uh, his uh, uh, rematch with Alekhin. So I don't know. I, I just, I just think Capablanca was the strongest. Uh, do you still smoke? Yes, I, I am considering uh, quitting it, but not just yet. Uh, what is the difference between average player and a good player? Uh, well, I believe an average player will be able to play a great game, but then will also be able to play a really bad game. And the good player will be more consistent in his games, like he will maybe, you know, those games that aren't really in his style, maybe he will draw them, and those that go his way, he will win, the, win those games. Uh, for example, you've seen my video how I drew against an international master and right, uh, who was rated around 2400, and uh, right after that game, when I returned to Krišovci, we played uh, our chess club championship started and I lost the game against a 1600 player so that's like the definition of non-consistent uh, uh, hi what do you think about Shachowski commentar uh, on HRT3 do you watch it that's a chess show on, on Croatian TV uh, I think it's uh, I think it's great and uh, I have seen it a couple of times but as I don't have a, a TV set in my apartment um, I, I don't watch it like regularly uh, what made you put uh, the tall picture in all of your videos? Uh, well, you know, he, he really deserves it. He was he was really great. Uh, for a beginning chess player, what are a couple of strong openings to use in general? Uh, I don't know. For a beginning chess player, you like I always say, you shouldn't study openings. You should just uh, maybe decide are you are you an e4 player? Then choose a system with e4 that you enjoy, and then choose like two defenses for black, uh, one to e4, one to d4. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't know. For like a total beginner, I would suggest you know just play e4, knight f3, bishop c4, and see where it takes you, and then find your own style. And uh, after a couple of games, uh, you will already have an idea what you like and what you don't like. Uh, okay. Uh, does your girlfriend likes chess? Does your girlfriend like chess? And how does she react uh, on? Uh, the amount of time you spend in front of the computer. Uh, well, even before I did YouTube, I spent a, a fair amount of time in front of the computer. Uh, but yes, she actually likes chess very much and she plays chess herself. Uh, when she was younger, she played chess a lot more, even competitively. Uh, at one point, uh, she, won the, she won second place with her team in, uh, in the, in the uh, finals of... Uh, that was like uh, Croatian school championships, so... Uh, yeah, she was uh, she played competitively and uh, but then like after maybe she was uh, 15 then she didn't play so much anymore, uh, but she enjoys it and her entire family plays it uh, both of her brothers uh, play it her father plays it So they're really like a really big chess family All right, uh, where are we now? Uh, have you ever done a positional queen or rook sacrifice in a serious game? Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, uh, I've, I've never done a positional queen sacrifice. I've done a lot of queen sacrifices that would win me a lot of material or maybe win the game, but uh, no, I don't think I've ever done a positional queen sacrifice. Uh, that's like for really strong players to do. Uh, but yeah, I have done positional rook sacrifices, you know, maybe to create a nice pawn, pawn chain or maybe to get rid of uh, an active piece and if your opponent's rook was doing nothing in the corner, then it was justified. Uh, I've always wondered what are the key things to have to play as beautiful as Tal and still have a good win rate. Uh, well, to, to be as good as Tal you have to like have really big imagination, really enjoy the game and you have to like really be a master at openings because you can't allow to have you can't allow yourself to have problems in the openings to lose a lot of time uh, because to play like Tal you have to get your opponents in time trouble due to you yourself being so great, uh, you know, in, in openings and the middle game. So those are probably just just a few things. Uh, what sports do you watch? Uh, generally, I don't watch any sports. Uh, I will sometimes it's if it's like a really important match, I will watch maybe MMA uh, or maybe I will watch uh, 
a soccer match if there's like the the world soccer championship going on but uh, like all the time no not really and i think we're at the last page very nice uh do you think you will be able to become even stronger uh well if i put some work into it then uh, perhaps but you know just by making videos i don't think so uh what is your favorite place to visit in europe uh i have no idea as i don't really travel that much uh I only only went to a couple of uh, countries, uh, like uh, I've been to Greece, uh, Netherlands, uh, Germany, and uh, but th that was like a, a long time ago. Uh, so don't really have a favorite place, uh, but I, I'm definitely planning on doing some traveling, maybe in the future. Uh, have you ever played with some Hungarian chess players? Uh, yes, I've played again. Uh, some Hungarian chess players as they they come quite often in tournaments in Croatia uh, what chess engine do you use man uh, well I use uh, depending on what what do I use it for I don't really have any like like I don't have stockfish or anything uh, when I do my videos I, I check the lines using uh, simply chess.com the one they provide uh, how satisfied are you with the chess scene in Croatia uh, well, it could be, it definitely could be better, you know, it's, uh, I'm not going to say it's non-existent, but uh, it, it could definitely be better. How many couch covers do you own? It feels like that couch has been every color under the sun. Uh, not sure, probably around eight, but, uh, you know, we we always get more because Meadow really makes a mess of them. Uh, I'm a decent player in longer time formats, but at Bullet and Blitz I'm terrible. How can I improve my speed chess games uh, not sure because I, I have the exact same problem I can play a really decent game in like longer time formats but in blitz and bullet I'm like terrible uh, I contribute to this probably to the fact that uh, I uh, my open opening knowledge isn't that great so I have to spend a lot of time uh, so probably probably that you know to, to be and you have to understand positions that you play so you don't waste a lot of time uh, what are your favorite neighboring countries? Neighbors country, country, neighboring countries, okay? I uh, can't say I have any favorite uh, neighboring countries, uh, but I don't know. I, I, like some three years ago, I visited uh, Bosnia and Serbia for a couple of days and uh, it was very enjoyable. Uh, how do you feel about chess variants and relatives? Uh, well, I don't really I don't really play them but you know I, I don't have like anything against Fisher random I know some people enjoy uh, Capablanca chess but that was that really never you know uh, got to see the light of day uh, four player chess really not my thing and um, I don't know if you ever heard of it but uh, there is a thing called Pazzo Shaco so do google that you know it, it's sort of like chess but not really you don't uh, play the capture your opponent's king you actually play to like make friends with him and there, there's no capturing of the pieces so this is like a new aspect to the game uh how do you feel about so okay uh do you have interest in other competitive games like go or bridge uh well those are all games i wanted uh, to learn at some point but like i said i never actually met anyone in person that plays go or bridge so never really got that interested to actually learn it myself uh, do you try to memorize the games you show on your YouTube channel? Uh, well, I don't try to memorize them, but when you go through it and you have to analyze it and, you know, you see it a couple of times, it, uh, you know, sticks. Uh, would you ever be able to do live commentary? Well, of course, I mean, you, <laughs> everyone would be able to do live commentary, but, uh, you know, it would, it would, pro it would only serve uh, maybe entertainment purposes as, uh, you know, I, I couldn't analyze a game played between top grandmasters. Uh, yeah, during a high-level tournament, uh, is if there was a way, uh, if there was, if there was played absolute perfect moves in chess from start to the end, uh, in your opinion, which side would win, black, white, or would it be a draw? Uh, well, that's like the oldest question in chess. Uh, some people consider that white would always win because he has the advantage of the first move. Uh, some say it would definitely be a draw, uh, but you know. It actually might be that black has the advantage. Maybe, maybe black has the advantage because white uh, is the first player that has the opportunity to ruin the perfect position from the start of the game. Maybe like the starting position is like the immortal Tsugzwang, whoever moves first loses the game. 
So could be a lot of things. Uh, what is your biggest fear? I, I'm I'm really terrified of seaweed. You know, if I if I go swimming and there's some seaweed, I'm not going in there. Uh, what do you think is the best way for an absolute beginner to learn the game and the theory with limited time available? Uh, I don't know. Game and the theory with limited time available. But just just enjoy it, you know, and you use the time you have to like study study something every day. Like maybe here study study a rook end game, maybe study king and pawn, study knight against bishop. Uh, those are the things that matter. Uh, where do you, where do you live? Who do you live with? What's your dog's name? Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure I already answered that. I live in Croatia and Krizuc. I live with my girlfriend, and uh, the dog's name is Medo, of course. And uh, are you a mid laner? Uh, I was, uh, but I don't really play that actively anymore uh, since they reworked Katarina. Uh, not not really interested. The, the games had changed so much. I can't keep up with it. Uh, what music do you listen to? Uh, I listen to all all music, uh, regardless of the genre. Uh, but you know e everything that's like quality. Uh, but interestingly, when I work, I mostly enjoy listening to nightcore, as that that kind of really stimulates working. How tall are you? Uh, I, last time I checked, I was 191 centimeters. Uh, I don't know what's that in feet, so you'll have to you'll have to convert that. Uh, how was your life uh, before you started making videos on YouTube? Uh, well, pretty much the same. I was always doing some sort of uh, videos. As I said, I was uh, I was shooting and editing weddings for like 10 years. So, you know, I was always making some kind of videos. Uh, only now, and only now I'm making chess videos. Uh, what's your most memorable experience that involves chess? <clears throat> uh, well, most memorable. I remember when I first joined the chess club, uh, they, they, I, you know, they, they wouldn't let me to play for the team. So I first had to play the the chess club championship, and then if I did well, I get to play for the team. And then uh, the first uh, chess championship that I, uh, chess club championship that I joined, uh, I, I think I got sixth place, and they had like six players for the team, or maybe even fifth place, uh, and they needed six players for the team. So then I, man, uh, you know, I got uh, to make the team, and I was very happy about it. You know, I was feeling very proud. Uh, may chess be sometimes bad because it causes dependence addiction. Well, I know a lot of players who spend like every every free moment they have you know going for just that one more bullet game or one more hyper bullet game and uh yeah it probably it probably can be bad but you know everything else can be bad just just the same uh tips to improve uh study the end game have you ever chosen to play chess rather than helping somebody you care about uh no i i can't say i have uh, what is your favorite soccer team i i really don't have a favorite soccer team uh, where do you get your content from mainly? Well, mainly from, from the books I have, many, you know, from, uh, or I just choose any, any big tournament played uh, in history or sometimes, uh, when I, when I, I am, I'm not covering anything at the moment, I check out your suggestions and, uh, if there's like, uh, if there's like a live coverage going on of some tournament for like, for example, now the candidates will be played, so I will be covering the candidates. So you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of content. You know, you really can't make all, all the videos you want. Uh, did you ever think your channel would grow this big? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, when you start uh, making videos for YouTube, you you know your channel always grows a little. So you know that uh, it will continue growing. You know, there will always be like one subscriber per day, maybe two subscribers per day. So you don't really think about it. And if you think about it, I don't think that you will, you will enjoy doing YouTube. Uh, so I don't know, but yeah, if I think like maybe a year ago, no, I, I, I wouldn't, I would, uh, I would never have guessed. Uh, do you think Tal would have been so great if he didn't drink? Uh, hard to say. I don't think his drinking was actually related to how great his games were. Uh, but uh, would it be better? I I also have no idea. Maybe it totally had no effect on his his games. You know, we can only speculate now. 
uh, or or <laughs> that's part of the magic. Yeah, it could be even that. Please suggest a stepwise strategy or core structure to improve uh, in chess. I'm 1670 rated on Lee Chess. Uh, if you're 1670 uh, rated on Lee Chess, study the end game. You should, you know, easily get to 18 or 1900 uh, just by, you know, studying the end game. Uh, would you like to be a commentator? No, not really. You know, when when you're when you're like making content like this, you know, you're free to do whatever you you enjoy. If you're a commentator, then you have to have to keep the certain gui guidelines, and that's like uh, I'm sure that's not very enjoyable. Uh, but I could be wrong, you know. First, I first I ha I'd have to improve my own chess a lot to actually uh, even try being a commentator. Uh, how did playing chess influence your everyday life and the moves you make when you want to achieve something? Again, very hard to say as uh, I've been playing chess for most of my, you know, let's say adult life since I was 17. So it's hard to say what moves I would have man made in my life if I wasn't playing chess. Uh, do you know any good chess book uh, but on Serbian or Croatian language? Uh, well, all the books I, I actually mentioned were all available in Serbian and Croatian. Uh, the, the Chess Fundamentals by Capablanca, that uh, chess uh, chess theory, uh, opening theory by Boris Lavivkov, and the, the Chess Tactics and Strategy by Grigory Mihailovich Lisicin, all of those books are av available in Croatian language uh, and Serbian. Uh, what is your rank in league? Uh, at the moment, I think, uh, I think last season I got to gold. Uh, but uh, I don't know. My best rank was somewhere. I think it was gold one. I I, I got the qualifications for platinum, but uh, ne never got to it. Um, not really. I'm not really a good player, but you know, if things go my way, I'm I'm able to play a decent game. Uh, do you follow Mato Elish, uh chess channel? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I follow Mato's channel since like the beginning. Uh, I don't watch so much of his videos as I have a lot of work, work to do myself, but I always uh, check up on, on him and, and how he's doing. Uh, how many ELO games <coughs> have you played? Uh, again, not sure, but uh, probably around 50, maybe something less than 50. Uh, yeah, definitely less than 50, or maybe maybe around 50, yeah. Uh, how do you prepare yourself for every game you are about to play? Uh, well, you have to, you know, really like uh, study study your opponent, study style, study the openings he plays, uh, prepare something for him, and uh, you know, uh, get get a lot of sleep. <laughs> you know, uh, really getting a good night's sleep is the most important thing when preparing for a game. Uh, li dolaziti kako u Zagreb ili neki drugi grad pa odigrati možda par partija sa fanovima? Uh, it's a question in Croatian. Uh, will I ever come to Zagreb? You know. To have a few beers uh, with the fans and play a few games uh well definitely I, i've never actually been invited by anyone you know to some sort of a gathering or something but uh, um maybe, maybe i will make a tournament but uh, yeah probably if i will be able i will make a tournament and then i will invite you all seems like a reasonable thing to do how are you getting on with your chess club championship uh, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know if I mentioned it. Yeah, I, I won the championship. I won first place, although I lost uh, my last game. That was very unfortunate. Uh, I will uh, I will show it uh, on my channel, although I, I will see. May, maybe even tomorrow. I will see what, what I ha had planned. Uh, more of your games, please. Okay, it's a deal. Uh, what is the most uh, beautiful place you have traveled to? Uh, like I said, I've never traveled much uh, this year. I went to Germany to Bad Piermont. That's a very, very nice place. Uh, although my girlfriend went in the summer and uh, she said that it's totally a different story in the summer. It's uh, a lot, a lot more beautiful. Okay. Uh, what other TV shows do you watch other than Game of Thrones? Uh, I'm, I really watch a lot of TV shows. Uh, I very much enjoy, uh, I don't know, The Black Mirror. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Spartacus, uh, I enjoy uh, Star Trek, um, pretty much all of them, uh, probably not Deep Space Nine, but uh, you know, uh, lately I've seen, I've seen Orville, Orville's pretty cool, um, uh, what's that new one I just uh, saw, it was uh, Carbon Beyond or something, something about Carbon, um, about people, you know, uh, actually 
uh, wearing wearing bodies as suits so that, that was pretty cool but anything that has like sci-fi in it uh, you know just throw it my way I, I will enjoy it uh, who will win the candidates in your opinion uh, well a lot of people are you know saying Aronian will win it but I actually have a crazy theory that it uh, it could actually be Karyakin that takes the candidates again as uh, after winning last year's candidates he really didn't do anything for an entire year and uh, I think uh, this could uh, may have uh, be because uh, uh, he has a guaranteed uh, spot in the candidates he doesn't have to try over the year so he can simply uh, save all of his secrets to unleash them in the candidates so I think he could actually be a very dangerous opponent in the candidates uh, did Tal ever played blindfold chess? I don't know if Tal ever played blindfold chess. I can't say I've, I've ever heard of Tal playing blindfold chess. I, I know, you know, every player does some blindfold analysis now and then, uh, but I don't remember him playing blindfold chess, but I'm like fairly sure he did. Uh, why Vasily Ivanchuk isn't the best player of his generation? Uh, well, you know, there are there were so many <laughs> excellent players uh, uh, in that generation, but uh, you know, probably because he's he's chucky, uh, you know, he can play a game l like a 3400 uh, engine, or you know, sometimes he he struggles with a 2200 player. It all depends on probably how he wakes up. Uh, what's your favorite beverage while playing a tournament game? Uh, well, it's if uh, if it's an early tournament or something, I always enjoy coffee and lots of water. Uh, but if it's like a um, you know, afternoon or an evening game, then I will maybe go maybe go for a soda or something. But always enjoy plenty of water. At what? Uh, at any point, were you scared that you won't even hit hit ten thousand subscribers? I uh, know I never really bothered myself with this, as you know, I enjoyed uh, the content I'm making. I saw people were enjoying them, even when there were very few people. You know, the comments were very supportive, and you know, I, I saw people enjoyed it. So. Uh, I never really thought about it. Have you ever played a musical instrument? Uh, well, I played, like, I tried playing a lot of instruments, but uh, mostly I played the guitar. Uh, I still have, like, an old electric guitar I bought, like, 15 years ago. I think it's uh, Yamaha ERG 121, something like that. Uh, it's, it's not a very good one, but, you know, for what I used it, it, it was quite enjoyable. Uh, have you traveled abroad to watch or play chess? And if yes, uh, where and how was your experience? No, I've never actually traveled abroad to play chess or to watch it, but I may be going uh, to, to to visit the candidates uh, this year. Uh, but we'll see if if it will if it will be possible. I would very much enjoy that to maybe cover a few games from there and to see it uh, live. Uh, what is your favorite time control? Uh, my favorite time control for classical chess is an hour and 30 minutes per player plus a 30 seconds uh, increment per move. Uh, that's like the only uh, classical time control I enjoy. Uh, and you know, for online bo b games, I enjoy Hyperbullet, like only 30 seconds, no increment. Uh, okay, uh, what's the idea here? That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a good one. Uh, when do you think that young Misha will earn the Grandmaster title? Uh, if you're referring to young Misha Osipov, I don't know. It's hard to say. <laughs> I mean, he's very, very young, and if he will even stay interested in chess. But you know, uh, if he if he keeps at it, you know, he he might do it like at, at eleven. Yeah, you never know. Uh, have you actually won any national tournaments? No, I've never won a national tournament other than my uh, my uh, chess club championship. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, no, just. I, I believe only my chess club championship. My style of play isn't really made for winning tournaments, you know. I, I will play an inter interesting game, uh, but uh, it will not be consistent. I will also lose games. Uh, what are some changes, improvements uh, you hope to make to your channel? Uh, well, I am definitely considering upgrading, you know, some of my equipment. Uh, my, my channel design isn't really something, you know, that's something I made a long time ago. Uh, not really impressed with it myself, but, uh, you know, I, it's not like I hate it or anything, but uh, I would like maybe to improve on that. Uh, and uh, content-wise, like I said, I, I would very much enjoy if I could bring some grandmasters to join me in my videos and uh, maybe even organize some events uh, later in the future. 
Uh, what inspired you to become a YouTuber? Uh, I don't think anyone uh, is inspired to become a YouTuber, nor do I consider myself a YouTuber. Um, you know, I just uh, enjoyed creating content very much and I, I was just uploading it every day and, you know, I saw people enjoyed it, so I kept doing it. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, you watch a lot of other YouTube channels, so that kind of impresses you a bit, I guess. Uh, I don't know, when I was playing League, uh, I was, uh, like, uh, I remember I was watching the Void Boys channel a lot, so um, maybe, maybe even he inspired me a little. Yeah, definitely, I would say. So, I don't think, there, there were a lot of inspirations to it. But mostly, you want to do something creative and interesting and, uh, you know, something that's not like going to work every day and, uh, you know, it. you, you want to avoid every day <laughs> being the same, basically. So, yeah. And I actually think this is the last question, so I have no idea how long this video lasts. Uh, if any of you uh, managed to, to, you know, uh, <laughs> write it out to the end of the video, uh, you know, congratulations, uh, do do honor yourself as, uh, in the comments, you deserve it. Um, so, I don't know, I, I do hope uh, you enjoyed this, and I mean, they're your questions, I'm sorry there were so many of them, uh, and uh, like I said, if I missed any of them, it's due to either being a topic I wouldn't, won't discuss on my channel, uh, or I simply missed your question, so please just, uh, you know, write your question in the comments and I will answer it. So, yeah. Uh, that's the that's the q a i do hope you enjoyed it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here uh thank you all for watching and uh i will see you soon